hello friends once again welcome you to my channel so in our last video we have seen that how uh, that reading from a memory or writing into the memory is performed because whenever we perform any whenever we execute any instruction then we are going to perform some basic operations repeatedly maybe reading from memory writing into the memory transfer between registers and the alu operation so next today we will see how one alu operation is performed so see uh, to perform your alu operation see this diagram because everything we are going to discuss with respect to the single bus cpu organization so in this diagram see your alu is going to perform the operation and the two inputs of the alu are a and b and the value of b input is coming from the bus so whatever is there on the bus it is always available on the b input but it is not going to create any harm why it is not going to create any harm because we are not going to give any signal to the alu if it is not an alu operation some value is there on the bus that is available on the b input here also some input is there because select line will be either 0 or 1 so either constant 4 or the value of y register will be there on the a input so these inputs are the values on the inputs are available but it will not do any operation until and unless it receives and signal over these lines right and who generates this signal this uh, decoder the control logic part is going to give it a signal to perform a particular operation there then the next part is in the alu what we know there are two inputs basically my alu operations are binary operation so binary operation requires two inputs or two operands but we are using one single bus cpu organization right so in single bus cpu organization at the same time we cannot have two data on the bus otherwise it will be a garbage so what we have to do one input we will be storing in the y register right in the previous clock cycle and wherever we want to perform the operation in the, that cycle will give the next input on the bus then both the inputs will be there for the alu and the or whatever operation we want to perform we can do so and the result will be stored in the z register means once the operation is done we can get the result in z register and from the z register we'll put the value on the bus and wherever we need to take it we'll take it from the bus thereafter so this part uh, hope you are getting so see one simple example we have taken add r1 comma r2 comma r3 what it is doing it is adding the contents of r1 and r2 and putting the result in r3 hello friends once again welcome you to my channel so in our last video we have seen how to perform that reading from memory or fetching one operand from memory or storing an operand result in uh, storing the result into your a memory location that we have seen in our last video and today we are going to see for how to perform an alu operation because whenever we perform an instruction or i should say when we execute an instruction basically we are going to do some transfer between registers or reading from memory writing into memory or a alu operation so these four operations will understand properly then we will slowly move to execute a complete instruction so first now we will see how to perform an alu operation so what we know our alu operation is nothing but mostly it is a binary operation so in the alu there are two inputs you can see that a and b and whatever concept we are discussing we are discussing with respect to single bus cpu organization over a single set of wires all the components present inside the cpu are connected so whenever we want to perform any alu operation we require two inputs one input on a one input on b once the inputs are available processor uh, this control logic will give a signal to perform a particular operation that signal may be anything depending on the opcode of the instruction so that is there now the point is we are using single bus and cpu uh, sorry alu requires two inputs so in the same clock cycle we cannot provide two inputs to your alu so what we will do we'll, we are going to use one temporary register in the temporary register we'll put one of the operand and the another operand in the next clock cycle only will give it on the bus then 
in that clock cycle will get the value from here to the input a the b input is coming directly and then this some signal will be given and the operation will be performed once the operation is performed result will be taken in z register and from the z register value will be given to wherever it has to be sent to some register to some memory location whatever it is right and see the point is whatever you are placing on the bus it is always available on the b input then also there will not be any harm why because alu will act on its input only when there is a signal on these lines so if there is no signal from the control logic then alu is not going to do anything with its input though there is some value on the input but it is not going to perform any operation so that will not create any harm that also we need to understand right so see and here uh, this content of y register is going through this multiplexer to the a input depending on the value of select line if the select line is selecting y then the content of y register is going to the a input if select line is selecting 4 then 4 is going to the a input of the alu this is also there so see select line value will be either 0 or 1 so either constant 4 or the value of y register is always there on the a input but we are not going to do anything with that right so this is there now see one example we have taken add r1 comma r2 comma r3 what it is doing it is adding the contents of r1 and r2 and putting the result in r3 so according to our here uh, um, this one concept what we have to do this content of r1 and r2 we need to place on the a and b input of the alu so what we have to do r1 con r1's content we need to place on the bus then it will go to the y register we'll do that and then see the steps will be put one of the operands into the y register because simultaneously we cannot provide two inputs on the same bus so first we'll do that put one of the operands into y register then put the other operand on the bus and perform the operation in the next clock cycle only the another input will be there on the bus as well as the signal uh, will come to the alu to perform the operation because both the inputs are ready so we can perform the operation now see after doing the operation send the result into the destination so z registers content will be sent to wherever it is required to send in our case it is r3 so in our case what we will do first we will move the content of r1 into register y this is the first step so what i suppose what i am supposed to write r1 out then y in so this is there can i write here r2 out no not at all then the two contents will be there on the bus then it will be a big mistake see why i am going to next step please understand that whatever i cannot do simultaneously for that only i am going to the next step and mostly here one step corresponds to one clock cycle of the cpu but it is not true always when it is not true always whenever there is a wmfc when you will come out of your waiting state that depends on the speed of the memory you are connected to right so this step is correct r1 out y in but here i can't write r2 out next step only i'll write r2 out if i write r2 out what does it mean that r2's data is on the bus then it is also available on the b input of the alu so do i write b in no not at all why because b is not a register b is the name of your input so here whatever is there on the bus it is available on the b input of the alu no need to write b in in and out are the signals associated with registers not with the names of the input so that also you need to remember r2 out means it is there on b input where is my next input in y register from y register i need to get it into what my a input right so what i will do whatever is there on y register it is connected to the mask also multiplexer also so now the job of multiplexer is to select this y when it will select y the value will go to the a input of the alu so what i will write select y select y will select the value on from the y register 
as the output of the multiplexer. So now A input is also getting its input. So both the inputs are ready in front of your ALU. So now what I can do? I can perform my add operation. So I'll give the add signal. In the same clock cycle, I will give, right? So the uh, values are there on the A and B input. Now add and then after addition operation, by the end of the clock cycle, result will be ready and that result will be transferred to JAD register for that JAD in. So JAD in will hold the result of your addition process. Done. Can I write here JAD out? No, because JAD out will do what? Will put the value on the bus and that I need to take it to R3. So already in the same clock cycle it was done R2 out. So R2 out is done in the beginning. Z out we cannot do in the same clock cycle, right? Because by the end of the clock cycle only Z register is going to get the value of your addition result, right? And the another point is two out operation we should not do in the same clock cycle, right? So Z out we will do Z out. Then the addition result will be placed on the bus, right? Because that was available in the previous clock cycles by the end only. Now in the next clock cycle beginning, we have put the value on the bus and then it will be transferred to what? R3 out, R3 in. So R3 in means by the end of the clock cycle, the value will enter into register R3. So this much only we need to do as part of the execution of this instruction, right? So hope this one is clear. Our these four operations has to be very, very clear how to transfer content from one register to another, reading from memory, writing into memory, and performing an arithmetic and or logical operation. So here the basic thing is how to make the two inputs available on the ALU, then sending the result to the destination. If that part is clear, then we can perform any operation. So thank you. This much is there in this video. And if you are getting from my explanations, then please like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.